Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Effective Resume Thursdays. We're very glad you're with us. It's uh, June 24th, 2021. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you have your cam your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your name and or your uh, name and picture to appear. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please just open up the chat box and enter your questions into the chat box. For those watching on Facebook, please just enter your questions in the comment field. I'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website in the Dallas-Fort Worth area called careerdfw.org to help those who are in job search in the Dallas-Fort Worth area by trying to put everything you needed to know for your job search in one place. In 2012, I started a second website, careerusa.org, to help people outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. It is available on Amazon. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's been around since the late 1990s. I took it over in 2007, and I'll tell you about our programming coming up tomorrow at the end of the session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team, also known as the PIC crew, since 2017. Uh, I'm sure everybody here spends a lot of time on their resume, but do you spend time practicing interviewing? There's a great way to do so. So if you want more information on how to uh, sign up for a practice interview, it's totally free. Uh, just let me know and I'll go send you the details. Uh, at the end of this session, we'll be giving away one month of unlimited use of jobscan.co. It'll be for the month of July. We'll pick two winners at the end of the session. So please hang with us to the very end if you'd like to uh, have an opportunity to win. All right, where well, our speaker today is Andy Cook. Uh, she's a life coach, career coach, a resume uh, expert, servant leader. A crown, I like the uh, crown straightener. That's my favorite one of all. And so she's going to talk about strategies to tailor your resume quickly. So Andy, thank you for being with us. And it's all yours. Thank you, Jeff. That's my favorite one, too. And, uh, and so I have a lot of fun with that one. And it really started out as just kind of this lighthearted thing and stuck. And so I was like, if I... If I have to pick one thing to be known as, Crown Straightener would be my favorite. So thank you for that. And I'm really excited to be here. I always love joining the Career DFW team. Jeff, thank you for everything that you do for the network and helping people to get connected back with jobs and navigate this whole hiring process, what I call the digital hiring process, which is different than many of my clients have ever experienced. They may have been in the workforce for the last 15 years without having to do an interview and come out into the workforce or the job search for the first time and realize it is very, very different than the last time they were here. So I appreciate all of the information that we get out into job seekers hands and uh, being a part of that is an honor. So thank you so much. I wanted to tie in, I always try to bring content that's a little bit different because I know Carol does such a great job of teaching the resume itself. So I want to talk about how to tailor a resume very quickly and make sure that we get information in the hands of you guys on how to navigate that job search when it comes to the job description being an interview question and your resume being an answer to that question. Last time I was here, we talked about resume language and how we can best select language that effectively tells your career story. So I'm going to share my screen here in just a minute and show you an example resume. It's actually a very truncated version of my resume experience, but I'm going to use that as my sample so that you can kind of see how do I go about tailoring your resume. If you're spending hours applying for jobs online, it may not be the best investment of your time. So I want to make sure that I give you ways to apply for three jobs a day. That's kind of the minimum that I teach and still get through that very quickly. So if you're spending more than about 15 or 20 minutes tailoring your resume, hopefully this will help you. I also would like to show you how to go through a job description and identify words that stand out is really important. If I were recruiting on that position, what words would I search for? I'm going to show you those too. I teach recruiting strategies for job search. 
I partner with other people who teach other strategies. They may have been a hiring manager before and teach what they looked for as a hiring manager. They may be more on the sales and marketing side and teach sales and marketing strategies for job search. I think as many different things that you can have out there working for you, apply online, do the networking, do the informational interviews, have the conversations, reach out to people. All of these activities should equal momentum towards results. So I never discount anything because I've had clients land every way possible. The majority of my clients have landed through the applicant tracking system. Next would be through LinkedIn and then networking and recruiters. So I think have as many things out there working for you that get you back to work in the shortest time possible. Okay, so first let me share just kind of a resume with you. Let me pull my resume here. All right. So when I do a resume, I want it very clean. I want you to be able to look at it and quickly tell, here's what I do and here's why you wanna to talk to me. I use this section up here called the core competencies and achievement section. I learned this from Kirsty Bonner. She was the top resume writer in the world who passed away last year. And I had the honor of going to some of her webinars and learning a little bit from her about this. I do this section a little bit differently than she did. So if you attended those seminars or had her do your resume, you probably have a much longer core competencies and achievement section. I have learned through the last year that if we do not start your professional experience on page one, page one will get skipped. And that's just something that I want you to know. Don't spend all of your time talking about these core competencies and achievements, but it's also discounted by many hiring managers when you just have words at the top that aren't tied to anything. When I was a recruiter, it was our account executive's pet peeve to have at the top that you do process improvement, but nowhere in your resume is there anything to back up that you've improved a process, right? So this keeps it from being an arbitrary word. So when I say I'm a dedicated servant leader, I want to tie something to this that backs that up. I have led, I've built, led, mentored, and coached 30, you know, up to 30 team members or a cross-functional team. I now have something to tie that to so that if Jeff is looking at my resume, then he's going to know in the first top part of my section, what do I do? Who am I? So even if you only read the bold words going top to bottom, because keep in mind, when we were in kindergarten and we learned to read, we followed along with our finger. The reason they taught us to follow along with our finger is we were training our eyes to move left to right. Nobody taught us how to do that when we're skimming. Hiring managers and recruiters skim resumes. We revert back to our original eye movement top to bottom. So that's why we use bolding strategically. I don't use bolding like all over the place because I want to keep people's eyes moving in a natural pattern so that they'll continue reading. This is what makes a two and three page resume digestible. So even if you only read the bold words, this is Andy Cook. She's a recruiting manager, a dedicated servant leader, a strategic IT project manager, behavioral interview coach, passionate job search strategist, an expert resume writer. Even if you stop there, you know whether or not we need to have a conversation. And depending on what job I'm going to apply for, if I'm applying for a resume writer position, then I'm going to switch up. I'm going to talk about my writing abilities, not my interview coach abilities. I'm going to talk about my ability to teach or to convey a message not necessarily my ability to implement an applicant tracking system. So what is it that I've done that they care about? What best supports success in this role? There is an internal tool inside Microsoft Word over in the insert menu. It's kind of hidden here. This is called auto text. They also can call it quick parts. And this has been a game changer. I didn't know about this until I had an executive assistant at the time who taught me this. And it was very, very beneficial. And I use it every single day. If I highlight, let me see. I don't think I have this one. Let's do behavioral interview coach. I'm going to highlight it just like I want to save it. In the insert menu, go over here where you see text box. It's the top middle icon. 
and you have, if you click the little down arrow, this is the quick parts. And I usually use out of text. I honestly don't think there's a difference. I've never researched that in detail, but from me utilizing both, I use, uh, I use quick parts for my longer, but I have all of these little summaries saved in here. And I don't have behavioral interview coach. Notice their alphabetical order. So down here at the bottom, I'm going to choose save selection to auto text. I want to do it in a way I'll remember it. And then I'm just going to save the selection. So it, I highlighted it and I saved it. Now, if I want to come back in here and add something different, I can go over to auto text. Let's say I was applying for a job that I needed a digital transformation, right? So now I just select it and it puts it here for me. And then I just fix the spacing and I'm ready to go. So every time you tailor a, a bullet point or something in your resume that you really like it, Save it to auto text because this makes the ability to build a resume in minutes. There's a YouTube video of me building a resume from scratch, like from a blank document to a full resume in three minutes using auto text. Um, so again, I'm going to go to the insert menu, auto text. Let's put behavioral interview coach in there. I'll worry about spacing in a minute. Um, let's put... Let's put leadership. I'll do a few of these. Servant leader. All right, so let's say I picked three. I usually say five to seven, but for time's sake, I'm not gonna keep going through it. I use a half space because we want it to be one cohesive piece of information and empty white space takes our attention away from the text that we are seeing. A lot of times I'll put a space, a little half space, you know, on either side of it just to make it look very clean and crisp and easy to digest. Okay. So I use auto text and quick parts almost exclusively when I'm updating information. And this is why I teach people to use this so that when you go in to tailor a resume, so I could save my maximize experience in various ways and then just come back in. So if I wanted to highlight my resume writing versus my coaching, I can have different versions of that saved and come out here and go. It is worth spending about an hour setting these up in multiple ways. Think about the different um, places you're applying, what titles. So are you applying for um, implementations and client success? Have two different resumes, okay? And you can do that through auto text without having to copy and paste. On if you're using a web-based application, Office 365, if you're putting it in, all of these uh, auto text that you see, I also have saved in TextBlaze, which is a Chrome extension. And then you can do that and insert them into your application using uh, TextBlaze snippets. So um, that's something for you to research and look at later too, okay? Um, any questions on this so far? What was the name of the sure. program, the Chrome extension? Text Blaze. Text Blaze. Uh, B L A Z E. Mm -hmm. One word, and you you can type in Text Blaze and go to the dashboard. I can, in fact, I can show you. Let me switch because everything else I'm going to do is in Chrome anyway. So I'll I'll go ahead and show you. So if you just type in text blaze dashboard. And I'm all about efficiency, guys. So it's blaze.today is looks like what the URL is pointing to. So blaze.today and think of it like it, you blaze through it. And it'll come up here. I already have an account, so I'll just go to the dashboard. Ignore the fact that the garbage truck is super loud outside, sorry. All right, 
and it's going to run super slow on Zoom, but we're going to get through it. And doesn't help that I have 1400 windows open. All right, so it's going to load text blaze. These are all at snippets that I have saved. So it could be my follow ups if I'm bidding on a job. I have all of that here, sending a birthday message or thanking people for my birthday message. So on that day, I came out here and just created a text blaze so that I could very quickly send a message. So if I go to type in any of my snippets and I can do this anywhere, like I have my Zoom link saved so that if somebody needs to join a call, then they can join it through Zoom. And all I have you, it's going to be a forward slash and see these little codes here. So if I want to connect with somebody, I have different connect options that I could do. Maybe that one's not working. But anyway, you get the point. We have these snippets and um, and figure out what it is that you're trying to say often. So this could be LinkedIn connections or like I said, your different parts of your resume. Come out here and save them. This is free. Um, I, I think you can have up to 25 snippets saved on the free version without having to pay anything. And I definitely recommend using it. Okay, Thank good. You. Anytime, anytime. So I am a huge advocate for using Google to find your jobs. Google is the whole reason I do not believe in a hidden job market as it's presented by people who want you to pay for it. So do I think there's jobs that don't get posted and in, are internal or confidential searches? Absolutely. But is that the norm? It's not. And the concept of 80% of jobs are not able to be found. I disagree with it. So I use Google almost exclusively for finding jobs to apply for. And this is an aggregate search, meaning it's pulling from all of the different job boards and websites. But before I go into the job board, I want to pull some of these jobs to show you how I will tailor it. Just to tell you the hidden job market you're going to find these jobs on pages like three to seven of Google. So if I go over to page four, I'm looking for career sites. So look past the ads and start looking for sites that have actual careers. And I'm searching for something that's odd. So just kind of be aware of that. But just look for, it'll say like jobs.verizon or something along those lines. Okay, that's, I, I don't want to spend too much time on that. But just know that I do recommend that as a, a strategy. Let me do it with Recruiting Manager. So page, think about pages three through seven, and you're looking for those jobs that may not be at. Uh, so like Apple, jobs at Apple may not be posted because they get a ton of applicants. So I'm looking here to find those jobs. Wells Fargo, it's their careers page. So I'm looking for Thing that say, things that say Panera Bread careers or jobs, corporate Lowe's jobs. These are recruiting manager jobs that may or may not be on the job boards. So I always spend a couple of times a week, um, I would recommend going out here and just looking at what may be posted that you don't even know about because it's not being advertised. Instagram is on here. Instagram doesn't pay to advertise their jobs because they have a steady flow of candidates. So just kind of keep that in mind why I, when people hear me say, I don't believe in a hidden job market, that's why. Okay. Very good. All right. So in the job section of, of Google, I really recommend going in, setting up some alerts, but I want to pull some of these. So Mauser, we know who they are. They're in Mansfield. I'm a Fort Worth girl. So if I were in the market, I could go out here and look. Notice you're going to have multiple places to apply. Um, I recommend their corporate website would be my first choice. LinkedIn would be second. A job board would be third. I don't re I don't apply on places I don't recognize the name because that's higher risk for scam. If I see a job posted here and Mauser's not an option, I would go to their website and see if it's posted. Okay, now we're going to get into the job description where it talks about the recruiting manager will supervise the recruiting efforts and recruitment staff standard, right? That, that standard language will enter the entire recruitment life cycle. This may or may not include background checks, right? So I need to be aware of that, developing policies. So in this already, I know some words that I need to put in there. 
recruitment life cycle. That's a very specific phrase. I'm going to make sure it's in my resume. So if I go back to my resume and I hit control F, then I'm going to make sure that I match recruitment life cycle. So this is where job scan comes in handy because it's going to do some of this matching for you. On job scan, I, I talk about this a lot. It's going to show you what words are missing. Do not overanalyze it, right? I'm not worried about the fact that entire is not on there. I, I wanna make sure that I'm speaking in the nouns. So recruitment life cycle, that's nouns. That's what I might search for. Notice life cycle, you may sometimes see hyphenated. Some people put it as one word. Follow the job description here. So if you're going to put it as life cycle, I'm going to match them and put it as two words, not hyphenated. Then managing and uh, developing recruitment policies, processes, programs, these processes, developing processes. I wanna make sure this language is in there so that if they're searching for me, they, they find me under somebody who best practices, policies, the language has to be there. And when we're searching, we use a like Boolean, it's called a Boolean search that recruiters use. So if I'm going to, I'll do it in LinkedIn. Maybe, we'll see. If it loads quickly, I'll do it there. If not, I'll switch gears. Hey, Jeff, have y'all demoed LinkedIn Recruiter? Uh, yes, we have uh, once a month, Kurt Vondermotter, who's Perfect. a retained executive recruiter, talks about the recruiting package. Perfect. Perfect. So in that, in LinkedIn Recruiter, we're going to do a Boolean search. Let me do it. I'll just do it in a Google search real quick. So that way it doesn't take more time to load LinkedIn. All right. So here I'm going to say, if I were searching for a project manager, project or program, what else could it be called? So I'm thinking of that. Um, and uh, manager or manager. So I'm thinking abbreviations, hyphenations, whatever. So in this search, it would have to have project or program, one of those two, and manager. If I said or it expands the search wider. If I say, and it has to have it. And just like a math equation, everything in parentheses goes together. Think about what words would go in here that a recruiter could type in to find you. If I'm looking for, I'll say operations. And, and the reason I do it in all cap is the operator has to be capitalized. Um, so, and, or has to be capitalized, so I just do it all. I might say operations and manager or director or executive. So I start to get creative to what words would somebody have in their resume. Now reverse this, think like a recruiter. I'm looking for, instead of the, well, you go back to the operations and manager or director or executive jobs near me. And that's where I'm gonna find these jobs, okay? In a Google search. And then I'll go through the job description. So going back to our job description and thinking like a recruiter on these jobs. Let's see, okay. Partnering with colleagues, and I'm never going to have that. It's so vague, and I would never search for partnering with colleagues as a recruiter. So I'm going back into uh, recruitment practices. Again, not vague. So when it's something, think about that takes a skill or requires an experience, something that you could have achieved. Those Think about those words. And one of the first things I do before diving way too deep in and spending a lot of time is go down to the skills and what are they requiring? If I didn't meet these, like I don't have a degree. So I would know that they're requiring that I could stop there. 
if they're saying finance required, I can stop there. You can apply for jobs where you have an internal connection where you don't meet all of the requirements. But if it's if they're all caps, bold words, underline, something that says required or must have, that's going to be, it's a hard no from there. And so I wouldn't try to spend a ton of time. If there was a job that I'm like, man, I'm an 80% match. I just don't have that finance experience or healthcare experience they're requiring, then I could just, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time tailoring my resume. I'm not saying don't apply, just do your resume as is. If that's what you're like, man, I'm a good match. I would love an opportunity. Just kind of consider it from there. Okay. All right. Let's see. Here we go. The applicant tracking system. Notice they're optional. I don't, I have not used Taleo in a long time, but I'm going to make sure it's on my resume. If I maybe have used Workday, but not Taleo. Remember how I said similar to the last time I was here for those of you who were with me. So if I had Workday experience on my resume, I would say Workday similar to Taleo. And then I need to be able to talk about how Taleo and Workday are similar and how they are different. If I have certifications, I want to make sure they're here. Think about preferred. Um, and I've talked a little bit about scoring resumes before. So if something's required, you either have it or you don't. If it's preferred, that's bonus points. So it, it works better if we think about what's closest to what they're asking for. And the further away you are from that, then the more likely it is for somebody to come in that falls closer to what we call closest to the money, closest to what they're looking for. Okay. Social media, I'm going to make sure that I specifically call out my experience with social media. I'm going to list the types of platforms. I'm going to list what I do with this platform so that when they find it, not only does it score, but it speaks to relevant processes and procedures that I use social media for, okay? Uh, verbal and written communication. I'm gonna focus on the word communication. So I may talk about cultivating open communication or fostering direct communication, something that will talk about my ability to drive that. Again, take every one of these bullet points. And before it, I would say, what is your experience with conducting interviews or candidate screening? And then the resume would need to speak to that. What is your experience with the applicant tracking system? But as you can imagine, the resume has to look different for the recruiting manager versus the career coach versus the resume writer, but it's digesting this. I'm looking for words like how did they, they're using excellent, solid, hands-on. This tells me this was probably written by an HR person. There's not a lot of flavor to it. I'm not seeing a lot of flowery words or creative. So it tells me it's probably a more traditional environment. It tells me that it, they're looking for just the facts. Don't get too crazy and outlandish with your resume. Give them a more traditional resume because they're not, they're being traditional with their job description. So kind of match that. Okay. Any questions on this part so far? All right. So what I wanted to do here, Jeff, I wanted to, to give people the opportunity to, to really talk about if they want to some jobs that they may be wanting to apply for and how can they speak to that experience. So I definitely, if anybody does pop it in the chat, I'll keep it going for now, but wanted to give the opportunity to make sure that those keywords are in there talk about tailoring it, compare their resume or compare a job description and what I would make sure was in there. So if anybody has that, just let me know and we'll kind of go over that together. But think about in your resume writing that your job is to tell the story as it directly relates to the hiring team and everything has to pass the, why do they care about this test? One of the biggest mistakes that I see in resume writing is that we use it to list a job description. And we tell them everything we've done in the history of our work experience. 
at whether we filed papers for in an internship in college in 1984, or we, you know, whatever that is, our childcare experience, and we're applying for an operations leader role. It, it doesn't translate well. And so they get bogged down in the details. So I would say definitely on that, make sure that you're speaking specifically to your experience as it relates to that job description. Everything needs to translate well and, and going through and telling that story. So very, very good guys. I'm looking at the chats here. Yeah, nobody's put anything in yet, so. Perfect, perfect. All right, then I'm gonna keep going with where we are. But I do wanna open that opportunity that if somebody does wanna specifically ask a question or anything like that, that we have that available. All right, um, then let's go back on the resume and talk about our, our sections that I would really recommend including and how, why I include them. We've talked about that core competencies and we've talked about how to tailor that very quickly. On the top part, this is another part that this is your introduction. Avoid giving an objective statement. An objective statement tells me what you're looking for, but not what problems you solve. In your, your opening statement, you wanna introduce yourself. I am a descriptive, you know, what is that descriptive word for me? My passion shines through in everything I do. I'm a passionate technology focused career coach. I want to immediately lead in with something that they can relate to that says, I solve your problem. If they're look, if they're clear in their job description about what problems they have, if you've had the honor of having a conversation with somebody who knows more about the position, then you can specifically call that out here. If they're saying, I want you to have operations management experience, now's the time for you to say, I'm an operations leader. I have managed teams of up to however many people. This is a really great time for you to make that introduction. Again, what do they, what is most important? If they didn't take anything else away from your resume, what would they need to know in that section? Um, a lot of recruiters or a lot of recruiting agencies take this part off. So don't spend too much time overthinking it, but use it as an introduction, especially because we know cover letters are not read extensively. Some people will look at them. A lot of people will tell you that they don't even open them. So make sure that you're using this as kind of an introduction and what I would say dress to impress, right? It's, it's the initial thing that they see. Then we have our core competency section, our professional experience and listing it. Uh, sometimes I'll put just a description of the company or an overall description of the role and then use bullet points for just the accomplishments. I think it's totally a matter of preference there. Notice how anything that's older, so I, I'm gonna go back about 10 years on my experience. And then other than that, I'm just going to list company names, locations, and what I did at that company under a previous work experience section. I don't think that you have to go into a lot of details on older experience. And the great thing about that core competency section is that anything that I accomplished maybe while I was a behavioral redirection specialist at Maybank, then anything I accomplished there, I could actually speak to up here in the core competencies and achievements part. And then that keeps your greatest accomplishments from being overlooked because we're bringing them to the forefront. I like to see a technical summary. This is especially important for technical roles Bonus points if you lay it out in a way that they can quickly see. So if you're looking for what applicant tracking systems have I used, remember how we talked about Taleo, I could come back here and do the similar to Taleo, okay? But make sure you list them. I list them alphabetically usually on a resume. Um, here I have not, but usually I will list them alphabetically just to make it easy to sort through. Uh, always list your education. If you do not have a degree, just list it as coursework toward and whatever degree you were pursuing. On your certifications, make sure you have those. I don't have all of my certifications on there, but I think that you should definitely have industry recognizable certifications and training. This does not include all of your, your certificate or your LinkedIn trainings. Make sure they're 
really relevant to what you're doing. The only time I'll list like a LinkedIn training is if maybe you're pivoting industries during an extended job search and you're just kind of trying to gather information from every source possible. And sometimes people just don't have it in the budget to afford an extended, an extensive certification or an industry certification. So that's the only time I'll use LinkedIn as that. And you might do a quick line about courses that you've taken. I absolutely recommend volunteer experience on your resume. It creates trust. It shows that you're an active member of your community and it can go a long way, especially if you've had board memberships. The only reason memberships and affiliations here where I have like the Who You Know show, why is that relevant? Well, it's relevant if I'm applying for a recruiting position. If it is not a recruiting position, they don't care that I'm a part of the Who You Know show. So just make sure that when you're listing memberships and affiliations, that they are relevant to the position that you're applying for. Publications, that's a great way to establish credibility. During your downtime, if you write an ebook about a specific topic, a great way to establish credibility, list it here under publications. Any speaking engagements that you've had, any and what type of speaking, was it a panel, was it, all of that needs to be on there. If you've been an expert witness for a court case, anything that establishes you as a standout leader, and then on your LinkedIn profile, when they go to your profile, it needs to back that up. It should be a living, breathing example of your resume. All right. Let me see real quick what this one says. All right. Okay, so Gail asks, do you use I in the intro? No, I don't personally. I, the re, as an industry standard, we don't use I. I don't know why, other than people say it's assumed and it would be all over your resume. I think it's an awful practice. My grammatical brain really struggles with it, but it, we don't use first person language. So even in your bullet points, not I did this or we did this, we're going to leave the pronouns out of it and just speak to the experience. Very good. Okay, so I had somebody, uh, I don't know if you want me to say your name, so I'll don't. They had a recruiter re or um no, a CPA advised not putting the paragraph at the top and replacing it with three columns of five item table ranked in the order from left to right. So I don't, there's two reasons I'm going to recommend you don't use tables. One, the ATS, if it's not using an Excel type parser, often doesn't parse out that table correctly. And then columns, remember how um, at the beginning we talked about going top to bottom, not left to right. Oftentimes on columns, what's on those right most columns doesn't ever even really get noticed so I would be very cautious on using columns or tables and uh, tables especially and the ATS can just really really struggle with those so be very cautious in that and again avoid having words that don't tie back directly to something I would much rather see the core competency section but understand that it's not how everybody writes a resume and it's certainly not the traditional format, but would much rather you stand out as a leader. Yeah. Um, no, I recommend, again, that's just me. I, I'd rather, I would rather not see columns and tables regardless, either with or without the table, but I'm trying to follow some direct messages over here, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you should never use tables because an ATS system is not going to handle it. You know, the best way to, to sort of check that is when you get your when your resume is ready to go before you apply online, save your resume as a TXT file. And a TXT file will go and strip all the special characters and formatting right. out of your resume. And then you'll have a pretty good idea of what an ATS system is going to be looking Absolutely. at. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, another strategy I use on that, Jeff, is the exact same approach. I copy and paste it over into Notepad. Right. Like oh, yeah. Here. Notepad is yeah. a TXT file. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So um, just going over in and that and how it strips it out. 
The only time I've ever seen a system, some of the government websites that are using old Excel, like BB script, and it, they're using Excel parsers, sometimes they can, but unless you're really, really advanced software developer, it's going to be hard for you to know what type of parser that they are using. So I would just, as a general rule, I, I, I pull tables out. Yeah, when, when you're applying for a job on an ATS system, you want it to be, you want the resume to be very plain. Now they give you a place to attach a resume. You can attach a better looking resume because I've heard quite frankly that a lot of hiring people, the ATS system gets you hopefully to the top of the pile if, you're, if you've matched enough right. keywords, but a recruiter isn't gonna be looking at what's in the ATS parsing. They're gonna look at what your pretty resume is that you attached. Right. So, uh, you know, you may have to have two different resumes, one that you, that it sucks all the information in, then you attach something that looks nicer. Absolutely. And, and I think in that, I, and I'm completely in agreement with what you're saying. The, the, I think there's definitely some be very text driven, keep it clean. It's the reason. So when you put an actual line in your resume, it could come across as a border, which can throw off your page definitions. The ATS doesn't always deal well with that. I use this shading tool here to do, to add some color to separate my sections because the ATS doesn't care what color it is. It comes across more as a highlight than anything. And if I wanted a thinner line, I could uh, drop my font size down. I could widen it out. That's how I, I add some color definition to it so that what you attach and what you see doesn't get thrown off by that applicant tracking system. Right, and you have but to remember- absolutely. You know, and you also have to remember too is that you ask 10 different resume professionals what they want to see, what they like, you're going to get 10 to 12 different answers. And if you ask, if you go and you fix it for one of them and then you show it to them a month later, they're still going to have more changes you need to make. So, you know, there, there's no, you just have to be comfortable with what you're submitting. And if you're getting phone calls, it's working. If you're not getting any Absolutely. phone calls, you need to change something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and to your point, the, in 2020, I used a different format than I do in 2021. I'm constantly researching and, and, and reviewing. And the reason I started pulling the ATS code and really looking at how does it parse was to try to figure out, okay, what, what's the real deal here and how does it work? And because there is so much information out there and some conflicting information. And I think Find a strategy that works for you and do it and then repeat that cycle. And when you find an expert that you align with them, give it a try for more than a week, you know, try it for two weeks, try it for three weeks and see, am I getting feedback on this? Am I, when I apply, am I getting automatic rejections? That's a good indication. Something in your resume is not clicking with the ATS. If you're not getting any feedback, that means you're getting lost between the ATS and a hiring manager. So just kind of, that's the maybe pile. It means your resume is not answering some questions that they have about whether or not you would be a good fit for that role. And then if you're getting interviews, but not getting jobs, the problem is probably more in line with either not being, a, you're, they're finding people who are closer or it may be that you need to go to the practice interview team and work on some of those interview and closing strategies. So I would say we kind of troubleshoot it backwards from our goal. Our goal is to get an offer. We're gonna troubleshoot it backwards. If you're getting interviews, but no offers, work on the interview. If you're not getting interviews, work on the resume. And if you're not getting, if you're getting automated rejections, work on the resume format. If you're not hearing anything, work on the resume content. So. Right. Good feedback. Any other questions? Very, very Any good. Other questions? You're welcome to either unmute your mic or you can put the comment in the comment field. Absolutely. Going I'm scrolling once. through my message. Very good. Going twice. <laughs> Well, if there's nothing else, uh, we will we will proceed on. Andy, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, for those people who want to connect with Andy, this is what her 
LinkedIn profile looks like. Remember, you always want to send a personal note. Let Andy know that you saw her here today on Effective Resume Thursdays. Uh, and uh, you know, be sure to send that personal note. Remember on LinkedIn, when you see that blue connect button, you can send a personal note. If you see a white connect button, stay away from it. Do not press the white connect button because it will send a generic invitation to everybody. All right, uh, we also have a sample T cover letter, a one page bio and a, a sample resume. Uh, it's a little bit different format than what Andy has. If you'd like to get a copy of it, uh, you're welcome to send me an email to resume at careerdfw.org and I'll be glad to get that to you. Just let me know what you're looking for. And uh, I usually, I'll be on that email account this weekend and be able to get that out to you. Uh, Career DFW and Career USA, we're putting on training five days a week. So hopefully you'll join us. As I mentioned tomorrow morning at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group at 9.30 in the morning. What's going on in Richardson, Texas? Our speaker is John Jacobs. He's the Executive Vice President of the Richardson Economic Development Board. He's been with Richardson for well over 20 years. He knows what's going on. If you have a company that's based in Richardson, or if you have questions about a company that used to be in Richardson, has moved maybe to Plano, uh, he will know about it. He will have contacts, uh, very informative uh, person. So he'll be, uh, be our presenter tomorrow. Uh, Women of Wisdom, they don't meet uh, tomorrow. They only meet the first and third Friday of the month. Uh, next Monday for Effective Networking Mondays, our uh, guest speaker will be Jay Fisero. It is a pre-recorded session from a couple months ago. Uh, it, it'll go about an hour and 15 minutes. So uh, just be aware. It's great information. Jay's got a book out and there's not one thing in his book that I don't think any of the career leaders that I've met disagree with because he's very analytical. He's an ex-CFO. So for him, it's very process oriented. You do this, you do this, you do this, you practice, you rehearse. Uh, and just, it's a really, it's an outstanding presentation. So please join us for that Monday at one o'clock. Tuesday for LinkedIn Tuesdays, how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies that get results. Our speaker is Locke Alderson. Uh, next Wednesday, if you're interviewing Wednesdays, we'll be on session number nine of 13 demonstrating enthusiasm and changing careers or industries. Uh, so uh, if you've missed lessons one through eight, you're welcome to go back. You'll be able to see those on the Career USA YouTube channel. And I'll show that to you in just a second. Uh, this session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel uh, to view in the future. Please follow us on Facebook. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The more followers, followers and subscribers we have, the more options that uh, both uh, systems offer to us that we can do some really cool things with. On the Career USA YouTube channel, uh, be sure to click on playlist. It's the easiest way to do that. And then down below, you can pick resumes, interviewing, LinkedIn, uh, whatever, Frisco Career Transition Workshop, whatever it is. And then don't click on the video down there, but click where you see that red arrow where it says view full playlist. And then up will come a list of all the different events in chronological order. And you can go back and pick whichever one you'd like to go back and review and, and see. They're all there for you. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops, please join the Career USA mailing list. Please send an email. All you have to do is send an email to Career USA, the plus sign, subscribe at groups.io. You will not get spammed, but what you will get every day is the topic of the day, the title of the talk and the Zoom link. So you don't have to go looking for it any place. You'll get that in your email every morning. Uh, all right, uh, what we wanna do now is we wanna give away a unlimited use of jobscan.co for the month of July. So what we need you to do is in the chat box or in your comment field on Facebook, please enter a number between one and 100. And we're gonna play the price is right rules. You must be the two closest numbers without going over. Two closest numbers without going over. So uh, we'll give everybody a little bit of chance to put something in there. A number in between one and a hundred. Don't pick one. It's a hint, don't pick one. Uh,
Joanna, I need you to go on Facebook and tell me, do you want 64 or 46? You can't pick both. So please pick one or the other. All right, let's see what our winning number is. The winning number is 55. So let's see who we have here. 55. Pasquale got 47. And Joanna's got 46. So jo Joanna on Facebook and Pasquale on Zoom, if you will. Pasquale, please put your email address into the chat so I can copy that and I'll get that uh, to the provider uh, that's coming up here. And Joanna, if you will put your email address in the comment field, uh, I will go and delete it as soon as the session's over, but at least don't allow me to copy it. Uh, Bonnie says, was this talk recorded? Yes, this talk was recorded. It'll be up on uh, Facebook in the Career USA YouTube channel uh, in about an hour or two. It depends on how long it takes them to process it. All right. Please know, Career at FW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. Uh, Andy was a volunteer today. I'm a volunteer. I've never gotten to pay to do any of this over the last 13 years. This is what I do to give back. This is my little charity to give back to people. Uh, Career DFW, we survive on donations. Uh, please consider making a donation when you land your next job. It would really be appreciated so we can continue to provide the services that we provide. So thank you for joining us today. And everybody have a great rest of the week or weekend and we'll see you. Zelda, what say you?